Some relatives from the Ituku River have arrived at the Sanema village. The compulsory greetings are a real ritual. Two by two, they recite their respective family trees, which sometimes go back 20 generations. <laughs> Meanwhile, daily life continues at its slow, steady pace. The Sanema work just enough to eat and be comfortable in the village. They spend a lot of time doing nothing or playing simple, almost childish games. The arrival of visitors always breaks the monotony. They prepare dances, games and food for all. The warriors paint themselves with burnt wood as they do when they go into battle against other tribes. This is a very old custom, challenging outsiders, even if it is only in play. The Sanema have always been and always will be a warrior people. The visitors enter the village with their bows strung. There, other warriors await them. The tips of the arrows are wrapped in banana leaves so they will not wound anyone. This is merely a welcoming ritual. The Sanema believe that after the creation of the world, the gods fought a cruel battle in the stars. From the drops of blood that fell to earth, mixed with the dust, men were born. So they believe they came from violence, which could explain why war and confrontation in battle are so important for them. They are always on the alert, observing the jungle that surrounds them. Enemies always come through the jungle, this tangle of vegetation which here is especially dense. On the Guayana Plateau, the jungle grows on granite soil. The trees have had to develop both ground and aerial roots, and so there are parts of the forest which are virtually impenetrable. The shamans are the most respected people of all. It is their job to order the social behavior of the community, take charge of the worship of the spirits, and cure illnesses. They know the pharmacopoeia of the jungle and how to make medicines and powerful poisons. <laughs> It is also their responsibility to collect and prepare the Sakona or Yopo. They search in the jungle for the tree called Amahi. The bigger and older it is, the stronger will be the hallucinogenic substances obtained from it. First, they have to make a fire, which is not easy in the depths of the jungle, because the atmosphere is extremely humid and the wood, though it is not green, is soaking wet. They lighted with a red-hot brand they have brought from the village. Though at times they manage to get matches from the Yeokwana, they always keep a fire lit in the village. When someone wants to light another fire, they take some of the embers. It has been like that since the beginning of time. The fire never goes out. There was always someone chosen by the Chaman, entrusted with the supreme mission of keeping it alive. There have even been wars over fire. 
When a group was left without their fire, they attacked another one in order to steal the embers. To extract the sakona, they tear off strips of the bark of the amahi, moisten them with saliva, and place them over the flame so they release the alkaloid. The wisdom of the shamans is the reason behind a new invasion of the jungle. First it was those who came in search of rubber, then later gold. Now the pharmaceutical laboratories have come to exploit the botanical knowledge of the shamans. They are less violent, they do not organize massacres of the Indians, but their presence and the objects they bring with them in order to negotiate upset the balance of the culture of these indigenous communities. They are the latest scourge to which the jungle has been subjected. The hallucinogenic resin forced out by the action of the heat is put into a pot and then cooked until it solidifies. The zircona can be classified within the group of entheogenous indolic pharmaceuticals. They are only used ritually as in the case of other societies with peyote, ayahuasca, the San Pedro cactus, or in Central Africa, the iboga. Before returning to the village, one of the shamans tests the efficiency of the preparation. The visit is also a good excuse to go fishing, but first they will have to collect barbasco lianas. Once again, they make use of their vast knowledge of their environment. The jungle provides everything they need, and hence the profound respect they feel towards it. This is where the spirits of their ancestors live, along with the others of the jungle itself. Every tree, every plant, every living being is the dwelling place of a spirit. And that is why every time they cut a tree or take something from the forest, the shamans have to ask their guards for permission. They cut the barbasco lianas and crush them with wooden clubs so the sap will be more easily released when they submerge them in the river. These communities are self-sufficient. They belong to this land just as much as the jungle itself. They know no other world beyond the limit of the forest. They are happy with their deeply rooted customs, but there are still some zealots who come here to speak to them of the true gods of the West, to deprive them of their culture to plunge them into confusion and bitterness. They are missionaries, especially those of some Protestant sects such as the New Tribes, who fervently seek to convert the infidels and cause authentic disasters with their ridiculous, outdated preaching. We have met Indians covered in fungal infections because one day some missionaries came to their community.